Hey YouTube, Dawn from Savory Home Solutions, property preservation, home preservation, whatever way you want to say it. Um, just wanted to put out a quick video. I see a lot of people posting on YouTube about their companies and how you can start your own preservation company and they want to help you and they want to show you what they do and I just figured every time I see them I mean they're all professionals in their industry of course but there are some things that they aren't doing correctly and um, I just want to do a series of videos and they won't I can't cover everything today, so I'm going to start out with just a little bit about ourselves and maybe throw a couple little tips in there. Um, we've been doing work in the industry for six years now, owning our own business for two years. The company that we had worked for had closed, and we were just totally devastated. And it was a complete accident that we found this industry in the first place and wish that we had known it when we were back in our 20s because I wouldn't be sitting here doing videos right now if I knew about this then. But anyway, for a year we sat here just worrying about what was going to, you know, happen and all our bills and we had our electric shut off a couple times and, and, uh, we had a guy that had hired my husband from Craigslist way back six years ago. Um, he opened his own company when the company went out of business and we were like, there's just no way. That's totally unheard of to be able to just open your own business when, like, what do you do? You know nothing about it. You're scared to death. We were scared. So, for an entire year, this guy just kept sending us messages telling us how much he just made to do this and how much he just made to do that. And we were just like, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> you know. Those people are like, you're crazy if you go into business for yourself. But we were, we were just scared. So this is really funny. Um, I saw there was a day that we were going to visit my grandmother in a rehab center. And we were just sitting at the red light. And it was a very long time since we had heard from this guy that, got us started and kept bugging us all the time to keep going and I said you know we haven't heard from him in a really long time and then when the light turned green and we started to go we got a text and I said but you know it was it was him <laughs> and he was telling us hey you're missing out just did this for twelve hundred dollars and we're like, what? You know, so we actually decided to look into it. And that was in November, I believe, or December. So we had to wait for our income tax money because there's just no way we had money to start a business because it's like you need everything you need. You need an LLC, you need a business license, you need a branding name, and, and the insurance for, like, when you're not even working yet. You have to buy insurance because you have to tell these people that you're doing work for that you have insurance before they will contract work to you. Um, you also need your license, if I didn't mention that, and you need it in the state that you're doing work in. And sometimes the people that you work for will give you work in other states that you're not licensed for. But in some situations, the type of work you're doing, you don't need a license. Like say, they need a grass cut done. You won't need 
a license for that. Anybody can cut grass anywhere, and you don't need a license. But it, all, it is always good to cover yourself anyhow if you're going to go out there and just be a lawn cutter to actually open your own business and get insurance and so when you run over the neighbor's flowers with your lawnmower you won't get sued. So anyway there's lots of things and I'm just winging it right now because I did have a script that I wanted to say but I think I do better off just saying what I want to say. So here is the actual photo that I took and this photo was taken on September 8th of 2001. It was at a wedding at the aquarium in New Jersey and the sun started going down and somebody's like take a picture take a picture because it looked beautiful and it does and I had no idea that you know when I took that picture that how many years later I would be using it for my business card and you'll see later in some of the pictures that I take pictures of the Philadelphia skyline all the time so I have beautiful pictures of the Philadelphia skyline because we're lucky enough sometimes that we get we go up on the roof of the Sugar House Casino and you can see everything and everywhere so I go nuts when I go up there and take really good pictures and you'll see a couple really neat pictures because what I won't do here is show you pictures of the houses that we do work on because that's not legal and that's one of the things that everyone out there that wants to get into this business or they, you know, like, they'll go out and they'll post their first job they ever did and they'll be like, this is how you do a debris removal, and which is great. Thanks for showing us, but you should do it on your garage or something because you're not supposed to put up pictures of the properties for who you're working for. They contract you to work. There's a confidentiality agreement. You know, it sounds pretty funny because you think that, you know, top secret FBI stuff, but it's, you know, there is a confidentiality agreement between you and the company who contracts you to work, whether it's a grass cut or a debris removal or changing the locks or doing the roof. You are not allowed to show these photos online anywhere. So, just saying. Um... It is fun out there when you ride around. I think you'll get to see one of the pictures that you get to see so really strange things. And all right, so this something I forgot to say. Um, this picture was taken two days before the most horrific thing that ever happened to the United States of America which the anniversary just passed. Very sad day. But life moves on and everything happens for a reason. Haven't figured out what that reason is yet, but it's sad. Okay, so here is me and my husband. My husband is Howard. And of course, I told you before, I am Dawn. And we went into this business to basically change our lives and maybe be able to save some money for putting our child in college that is about to go. And we've been in here two years and I'll tell you, we haven't saved anything for it because it's, it is a good business, but it is, it's kind of hard to say what I want to say, but um, 
we love doing it. And we love <clears throat> coming home and putting the invoices in, or actually most of the time we're here all the time just putting invoices in, put, put pictures in and work orders in and just always, always working. So, but we can get to that later. So, just so you know, okay, um, this is Howard and me, and we were married on July 21st in 1996 and had our first child in 1999 on April Fool's Day. And our second child came December 26th in the year 2000, which actually was the first day of Hanukkah, the first night of Hanukkah that year. So that was pretty neat. We have holiday babies. Um, I believe, like I said, I believe everything happens for a reason. I believe in karma. I am very spiritual, very good. And sometimes that hurts because Owning a company, you have to harden yourself and harden your heart. And a lot of times when you start out, you have friends and family helping you. And it's, you know, I can't, I don't really want to talk about any situations that happen because, you know, it's also confidence. But um, just to say, if someone makes a mistake and, you know, it happens and you tell them about it okay because they're your best friend that mistake don't matter and it's like and you need to just shut up and that's quick that's what happens so or they're your mom or your dad or your sister or your cousin or just anybody who's doing a job for you if they don't do it right um, it's impossible to get it through to them that they have to to do this right because I'll tell you what if you send somebody out to do a job and they forget something they could do the greatest job in the world but they forget one picture and you don't get paid for that job and it, it same goes for you if you're out there doing the work and you forget a picture then you're gonna have to go back to your own cause more gas more wear and tear in your car go back and get that picture and sometimes it costs more than the job that you just did, okay? Because in property preservation, when you work for some companies, um, I mean, you have to do little nickel and dime things to get to the good stuff, the stuff that pays you good. But then some stuff that pays you good requires a lot of money to do them. And where are you getting that money? I can tell you I'm very proud that I have not actually used any credit in our business. We have no um, no credit cards. Okay, we do have an investor that helps, which is actually you know a family member that that helps out, and we give them a little bit of money back on on their return. So we were lucky enough for that, but I didn't get that for over a year of being in this business. I had to you know we had to come up with this money all the time. Until, you know, people started to see that we were serious and that we're working and, you know, we build it up. And we build it up from just my husband going out on his own to my husband going out with another person. Then put in three or four people in the car just to get like 25 grass cuts done in one day. Okay, so two hours later I'm back. Um... Here's a street sign that one of our people took for us, so it's pretty interesting, and it says, Hammer Time. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> There's things that you can find out there. There's some more really funny pictures, too, um, that you'll see through time when I'm doing this. And I don't remember where I left off, but I'm sure, yeah, I was talking about the time consuming, how time consuming this business is, especially if you're out there doing the work on your own and you have to come home and sit there and put every order in. So like, you know, say you got like five orders a day or four orders a day or, you know, depending on what they are, they're time consuming. If it's a grass cut, you do it yourself, you can zip, zip, you're done. You just need a street sign and. Um, address verification, like just taking the address close up, 
the house far away. There's a few different things uh, that, that that's required of you before <clears throat> you even start your job. And then everything is before, during, and after photos. And usually uh, there's a certain required photos, like for a grass cut, let's say 35 photos, before you'll even get paid. If you give them 34 photos, you will not get paid for your job. So you have to really make sure that you do it right the first time. Or else you're going back, and um, that gets very costly. So doesn't happen to us very often anymore but there's always a slip up and, and and it does get you very upset so if you you know are an odor and you're sitting here putting orders in all day long all night long paying people to do your work for you and they don't come back with one required picture you, you just like really I mean that's your job your job is to remember the street sign and the address verification and before, during, after photos and always make sure that when you're taking the pictures that at least there's a piece of the house in the background and like if you're taking grass cuts and so because you can take that picture anywhere I could be on the side of this road and take all my grass cut pictures and say this is where I am you know but nowadays they have they have check-ins now on your your phone, so that's another thing. You're going to need a smartphone. You're going to need data. You have to make sure. So when you go there, you log into their website, look up the order. You have to check into that order, so they know that that you were there when you were there. So now they're doing time stamping every photo, and not just time stamping now. There's their um, well date stamping. And time stamping. Like they want to know every minute that you're taking a picture. So it has to say like 9-15-2016 at 4.03 p.m. Or such and such. Every picture you take has to have your time on. It, the cameras out there, not everyone is, you know, suitable for that. So like when that happened, every camera had to be reformatted. Okay, not to mention how many times one of your people bring back your camera and say, look what happened to it. I don't know what happened to it. It just don't work anymore. I didn't do nothing to it, you know. But, <clears throat> you know, they throw them off roofs, you know. <laughs> so, um, it, it is challenging. And I'll tell you, I sit here a lot of nights, real quiet, putting orders in, and all of a sudden my husband will yell so loud because... There's a picture missing, and it's like the end of his world because the companies don't care. They don't care. They want their work done. People make too many excuses. Like, oh, I couldn't get there today because of that. There's no excuses. And there's been maybe one, two times that we've had to ask to move an order, you know, because you just have to go in there with the no excuses attitude and everything that they need and they want you need to find a way to do it unless it's just beyond totally beyond something that you can't do and then you need to call them and tell them and they'll either you know reassign it or work something out with you but it's very rare that we've ever had to turn down an order um or tell them we can't get it done So I'm not sure where this picture came from. I think it might have been taken by one of our people, but it could be a Facebook picture. But this is obviously something when you work in the city of Philadelphia that you get to see. And, and always, almost a, like every other red light, um, you know, there's somebody begging for food. And, or money, whatever, you know. Sometimes you help them, sometimes you can't, but... You got to be very careful because you really don't know who you're giving money to. You could reach out to give your money to somebody and they could grab you and, and rob you for everything you got because you thought you were just helping somebody and, and it turns out bad. So, you know, you have to ride past these people sometimes. makes you feel bad, but your life 
and your business is what matters at that time. Now this isn't one of our pictures, but I'll tell you what. If you can put this much trash on your car, then you're hired. Cause that's dedication right there. We have people that don't even want to put trash in their cars. And look at this picture. I mean, when you got to get a job done, like I said, no excuses. You get it done. You just, you just do it. And doesn't care if you have to strap the trash all the way up on your car like that. Whatever. Um, you know, you're going to find people to say to you, I ain't putting that stuff in my car. That smells, you know. But if you want to do the job and you want to get paid, then you got to do it. I mean, there are some things that are unreasonable, I can understand. But as long as you put something in a contractor bag and you close it up tight, then nothing's going to come out of that. Nothing's going to hurt you. Nothing's going to hurt your car. I mean, if you want to do this business, sometimes you just got to do things. I mean, we had somebody driving around in one of our trucks with uh, concrete, busted up concrete in the back of the truck. And we, you know, assuring us that they got rid of it. And, um, you know, over a $1,000, uh, way over a $1,000 in diamonds later, that concrete is still in the back of our truck. So... You know, there's lots of things that people are going to do to you out there. You got to keep an eye on it. You got to, you got to watch it. You got to make sure that people aren't, um, like say, but the grass cuts, you have to remove the clippings and take them with you. And people don't know where to put that stuff. They don't know where to trash it at. And, you know, and they don't look up, you know, there's facilities that actually take this stuff for free. Of their stuff they'll take it for money that you have to pay um, but they'll people will just leave stuff at the properties and and you know and they do their little trick photography to make sure that you know you didn't see it but you know that's the bad part about you know not doing this business for yourself and trusting it to others but we don't usually have that problem at all but we have seen some real dirty work out there from what you know Take it over a property, go into from one company to another. Uh, you know, the company will reassign it to you, and and you'll go there, and you'll be like, really, you know, um, just unimaginable stuff out there in property preservation. Just you know, high, you know, it's high reward, and you know, and people want to do less work, less time for more money. So they're just like, yeah, wing it. You know, we are not like that. We are, you know, we built ourselves up just from our reputation of, of doing things right, no matter what it costs us, even if we have to put some money out and we don't get paid. We make sure our jobs are done right. And, you know, sometimes you take a hit and other people have that attitude like, oh, I ain't doing that, man. I ain't doing that. It's going to cost me this much and they're only paying me this much and and then you just mess it all up for yourself because they don't respect you anymore and um, you know when you could have got that five thousand dollar bid you know it comes in later and because you refuse to help them with something that you would have to put a couple dollars out for then you're not going to get that five thousand dollar bid and that's where the money is you know and um, it happens you know, realtors, um, they're a little different. Things, you know, they pay they pay a little more sometimes than the uh, PPO side of it because, like PPO, they're like the middleman, you know, and you're the one on the bottom of the totem pole. And then there's people under you, like, you know, so it like goes from the top person to the to the person that. Uh, contracting you and then it's you and then you got to pay people to do your work so the pay gets lower and lower and lower as you go down so realtors they might pay a little more and uh, it'll work out you know it usually works itself out but always always try to do your best to, you know to get something done no matter what you have to do to get it done and this is an excellent example of that
Well, there is another thing. Sometimes you have to travel out in a snowstorm. This was a freak snowstorm on April 9th of this year, 2016. Um, it just, it, the snowflakes were so big, they looked like feathers in a pillow. I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. And we had to run out to do an estimate. Um, that's where you go to a house and take photos of whatever it is that's wrong. If there's a plumbing problem or or they just want to rehab the whole house or or the carpet is all messed up and they want you to rip it up so you're going to go there and take pictures of basically you just take pictures of the whole house but make sure you have plenty of pictures of the carpet because some of these businesses if you go there for the carpet and you take a picture of the carpet you'll turn around and they'll be like well the door was messed up why didn't you fix that or there was a broken window and you didn't fix that you know so it's always good to have yourself covered to have these photos um also um what was funny on this day we went to set out for this estimate this was probably only one of the jobs that we turned in late in our life and that was just this past april you know like in this time we've been in business um we set out to go do this estimate and the snow was so bad and the roads were so bad that we turned around we could we were like no way well here like if we would just kept going up this road a couple of red lights later there was no snow at all and it turned out that where we lived was where the freakiest snowstorm came through and nobody else really saw anything at all and and people were amazed by my videos and my photos of uh, our town being snow covered on April 9th. So, it, it, and, and they got like little tight snowflakes, but nothing like this. So, but then there's snow jobs. Like last year, in the, we didn't get, we didn't get many snow jobs. There was, and we were thankful for that at first because we were just getting used to um, having four four crews going out and shoveling snow in all these houses and we only had to do it one time thank goodness and by the time we got to some of it it was already melted and made things a lot easier for us but um this year from what i'm hearing is supposed to be a big snow season and um you know it's lucrative for money but scary because i'll tell you you go out there you might make like you know uh let's say you got four people doing like uh 40 50 snow shovels at like 30 dollars i don't even remember how much they are but they ain't no more than that probably uh it could be lower it could just be a little higher but just say 50 snow cuts a day 30 dollars okay so you're like wow yeah that's a great day but then all of a sudden smash you know <laughs> and there goes your great day um so i mean you're always replacing equipment always replacing stuff on your car um just it's just a very you know uh, i don't even know what to say but believe me you're going to spend money you're going to spend money in this business and you're going to think you're rich also. And you're going to spend money that you don't have. Um, money that you owe other people. Money you're going to need for services later. And then you're going to be like, wow, I shouldn't have went on that big vacation somewhere. Which I have not done. Because <laughs> I am scared to death, like I said, to spend any money. So, um, all right, let's go on to the next thing. Well, like I said, now... Part of our business is landscaping and uh you know like you go there you, we don't really fix up flowers and stuff but we do cut the grass and um and you have to watch out for the gardens and some people don't you know but um we do shrub trimming bush trimming tree trimming poison ivy trimming <laughs> which you will see like actually removal of poison ivy and you'll see later what happens when when you do that sometimes so you know well anyway uh this is a red what is this an oak leaf hydrangea uh my grandmother bought me um uh, my grandmother has since passed away 
and this is what it looked like as it was growing and it got beautiful really beautiful and here's of it growing and growing and then it got run over got run over by a lawnmower <laughs> my husband ran it over with the lawnmower see that stuff happens even at your own house well I was so devastated I cried and cried and and um, we just stuck it back in the ground just stuck pieces of it back in the ground that's what it looks like now so it did grow back and it looks better than it did so you know it grew back now if you have to ever plant flowers anywhere and it's a very sunny place I recommend these they don't hardly ever need water like never and they just keep sprouting and sprouting and growing and they're called portulacus they spread they grow they love they love burning hot sun and they'll sit there and grow and grow and grow so if you ever need to that's a good idea and these are close-ups of the portulacus Another interesting thing you get to see out there it was like rainbows and uh, cool thunderstorm clouds and I saw some shelf clouds never seen shelf clouds and if I did I never remembered them but they were so awesome to see um, let's see next picture there's the rainbow this is actually taken outside my home um, and ever since I got into this business I've been fixing up my home uh, the outside I've actually been doing my own landscaping you know and when I first moved here and I took that 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 I don't even know what it's called and I do this but it's a thing that you push in the ground and rip up all your grass you know um, so I'm on my hands and knees pulling up grass and putting down the uh, the tarp the things for uh, to put the mulch down to make sure the grass don't go through and I've been doing really good we got a nice greenhouse I planted gardens and I never did stuff like that before until I got into this business and, and when you think about it you're going and trying to make these other people's houses look nice that you know people don't even live there anymore <laughs> and, and, and you're maintaining them houses and not your own you know but and, the, and a lot of time that's because you don't got time to you're just really busy so I took advantage between the uh, seasons going to grass cutting. Uh, we dropped the company, one of our um, companies, one of our partners that came in and got us into a company with him. We became partners there. He decided to leave, so we did. So um, let's see, that's it with that. Now let's see what else. Yeah, this is the shelf cloud. This was the day of the shelf cloud. So we were out and I was driving my husband crazy to stop. He had to stop. So I went in and stop. <laughs> Just take pictures of these shelf clouds. They were awesome. And that's them there too. And the funny part about it, off to the left, you got to see a lot more. More shelf clouds. And there's my Philadelphia landscape that I like to take the Philadelphia skyline. I love taking pictures of it. It always looks different. See what I mean? You get good thunderstorm clouds and stuff. You get to see some really cool clouds while you're out. Another good picture. The bad part is in this business, um, in the summertime, you can work till like 9, 10 o'clock at night. And you can start at like 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning when the sun comes up and it don't go down until almost 10 o'clock at night. You know, like you can't take really dark pictures outside. You, they, they don't accept that. But you can take some pictures inside if you have a really good camera. And even if there's no power, you know, it's good. But 
some people are scared. You know, like we just had an instance where somebody was um, by himself at a house, and so you know they were together, and one person said, "All right, let me go to the store and get the stuff that we need." And and uh, he came back, and the guy was up at the end of the driveway, and he said, "What? What are you done already?" And he said, "No." And he's like, "Well, what happened?" So anyway, sorry, I got interrupted. So um, he was up at the end of the driveway, and he said to him, "Are you, uh, you got, you know, you're done already?" And he was like, "No, nah, man." He's like, "When I was drilling a hole, he said something touched me on the back of my shoulder, and I saw something out of the corner of my eye, and I just ran." So I mean, it is pretty spooky when you're at these houses. Um, this house actually has a pentagram in the middle of the basement floor and 666 written on the wall you know so uh, people go there and party and, uh, and and they do stuff in the basements and I mean almost every house somebody breaks into it for something whether it's stealing the pipes or just a place to live and you know you, you find all kinds of people you know all kinds of situations when you go to a house and if you don't know how to handle something like that or, you know, if you would be comfortable uh, in a situation where you walked in and people were there, you know, you might want to rethink this business because you see a lot out there. I mean a lot. Okay, how about like walking into a house and with, with you know, hmm, something unimaginable spread all over the walls and the floors and the ceilings and, and really... Like, why, though? You know, you just want to know why would somebody do something like that. But, I mean, you see the things that people leave. They just get up and they leave their stuff. They leave everything, their whole life. They just walk out of a house and leave their entire lives there. It's, and then sometimes they just leave nothing but trash and their poop. <laughs> Animal poop, their poop, doesn't matter. And believe me, if you're faint at heart, don't go. In this business. Ben Franklin Bridge. The nice picture from the Sugar House roof. Like when we go out for work, we sneak there after we're done. Drive around playing Pokemon. Oh, phone's ringing. Okay, so I'm back. This is like, I think, a day later. <laughs> so anyway, this is Howard, my husband, and this is him before he went to do a house that somebody else had done and never finished the job correctly with poison ivy, and he went back there to get it done because, like I said, we don't you know, have no excuses. We get the job done right. So he went there to fix, you know, the bad job that somebody had done because even though they had Tyvek suits and all kinds of stuff and we paid for everything for them, it wasn't enough. So he went back and this is what happened to him. So... You will see <laughs> if you do stuff like this, that this will happen to you too. So make sure that you try and have everything covered as much as you can. So nothing like this happens to you. So, all right. Well, I will come back another day with some more fun photos and some more tips on being a property preservation or home preservation specialist, vendor, technician, whatever you want to call it. But just remember in this industry, there's no excuses, none at all. So, and I'll be back with more tips later. See you later, YouTube. Thanks for listening.